Good morning. Good morning. What a joy it is again to come together on another Sunday morning to share the Word of God with you uh, virtually. I'm Reverend Ivan Carter. I'm superintendent of, of CUC. Uh, some know it as Sunday School, and where Sister Priscilla Smith serves as assistant superintendent, and Reverend Brandon A. Blake serves as senior pastor of the new Sunny Mount Missionary Baptist Church. Yeah. So before we go any further, let's just pause for a word of prayer. Gracious Father, again, we said thank you. Thank you, first and always, for your daughter and son, Jesus, and thank you for this day. Thank you, uh, for the again, for the gift of technology and being able to come together to share your word with your people. I pray again that our hearts and minds will be open to your word, that we may receive it and apply it to our day-to-day -day living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning lesson's title, uh, it is Call to Evangelize, Call to Evangelize. And the printed text for this morning is, is John 4, uh, 25 through 42. And, and you're for your devotional reading, we have John 1, 37 through 51. And so our words that we, the two words that we should know uh, today, we have marveled, that is to wonder or admire. And then we have testify, that is to be an earnest uh, witness, telling the truth about what is known. And so the, again, now our printed text uh, this morning is comes from John 4, 25 through 42. Now I will read uh, this morning the King James translation. I invite you to follow along with uh, the, the lesson, the, the, the translation that you have there. And as we go through our discussion, I may refer to the New Living Translation as times, at times. So here we have John chapter 4, beginning at verse uh, 25. So The woman said unto him, I know the Messiah come, cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman, yet no man said, What seekest thou? Or why talkest thou with her? The, the woman then left her water pot and went her way to the city and saith to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did is now this, is not this the Christ. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to, to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his, his work. So say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look unto the fields, for they are white already to, to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestow no labor, other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, the woman, which testified, He told me all that I ever, ever I did. 
So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they, brought, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more relieved because of his own word. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for he, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. So here, just a, a, a little background before we go further into uh, the lesson. We see Jacob's well. Now, there was, uh, there is, um, the well was uh, near uh, Sychar, and which is the uh, Samaritans believe it was built by Jacob. It was a narrow opening, the lesson tells us. It was a narrow opening, four feet long, and it was led from the, the floor of the vault into the well, which was dug through limestone. The ground that was mentioned by, by John had been purchased by Jacob, and we see that in 33 and 19, Genesis 33 and 19. And the area was later rested by the Amorites. We see this in Genesis 38 and 22. So the well is near the base of Mount Gerizim, which is the holy mountain for the uh, Samaritans, as Mount Zion was to the Jews. Now, the religious difference like this, it led to the uh, disdain uh, between the Jews and um, uh, Samaritans. So now, we look at verses uh, 25 through 26. The Jews and the Samaritans, they worship the, the same God, but their understanding of the word of God was different. Now, notice... The Samaritan scriptures uh, only included the Pentateuch, which is the first five books of the Bible. And their religious traditions rejected the writings of the prophets. They believed that Mount Gerizim was the true place of worship, not Mount Zion in uh, Jerusalem. And the Samaritans recognized that the Messiah would come, but they expected him to come as a teacher who would reveal all that will reveal all truth we see that in deuteronomy 18 15 to 20 now the conversation between jesus and the woman it did a couple of things there it challenged her and it clarified her understanding of the messiah so when the woman explained her samaritan view of the Messiah, Jesus confessed to be uh, the Christ, uh, the very one that she had uh, anticipated. Now, notice the, I want to read verse 26 in the Message Translation, Eugene Peterson's Bible, the Message. It says, I am he, said Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. So his revelation was the, the summary. His revelation was the summary of the systematic and theological conversation he had with the woman at the well. And this is the first time that Jesus uh, openly admitted who he was. So prior to his trial, he did not admit this to uh, the Jews. Now notice uh, the, the declaration uh, here. Notice to this woman, he openly declared who he was because he intended to reveal the truth of God to her. So now we, if we look for a moment uh, at Deuteronomy 18 and 15, it helps us here. Moses was prophesying about the coming Messiah. So in Deuteron Deuteronomy 18 and 15, Moses continued, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. Now Stephen used this same verse in Acts 7 and 37 to support his claim that Jesus was the Son of God. And so the coming of Christ to earth was not just an afterthought, 
it was uh, it was part of God's plan. So we look at uh, John uh, fourteen, excuse me, four twenty seven, and see the disciples had left Jesus at the well, and and they were surprised he was talking to the woman when they when they had returned. Now there are some observations here that we can make here. Uh, here, what this was the um, this was a talking to this woman was a violation of several customs. One we see here, it was uh, rare to see a Jewish teacher engage in a public conversation. And this one second one is the chasm uh, that was between uh, the Jews and the uh, Samaritans meant the Jews saw the Samaritans as unclean. And thirdly, it was a violation of the Jewish laws and of purification uh, to eat or drink anything belonging or coming from the Samaritans. So when these, when the disciples returned, they were, uh, they were. The New Living Translation says they were shocked. The King James says they were marvelled or wonder why he was conversing with this Samaritan woman. And see, the word itself implies this was a miracle. I have a few bullets here for that. It says this was probably due to the respect that Jesus, um, this was probably due to the respect they had for Jesus as their teacher and their leader. It was also a sense of awe, since Jesus often did things that were not expected and challenged traditions, and he confronted people about others that, that they, would have, they would have overlooked or rejected. And they respected him uh, too much to, to question his behavior. So we see John 4 28 through 30. Now, it has been said, it has been said that the disciples broke off uh, the, the conversation. Others say Jesus stopped the conversation. He did that because he had revealed himself to be the Messiah. Now, here we continue to look at John 4, 20 and 30. Notice what she does. The woman here was so excited, she left her water jar at the well on her way back to Sychar to tell about her experience. See, Jesus made an impression on the woman. And this stranger knew all about her past. This stranger who knew all about her past, he was not some ordinary man. And, the, and, the, and there was a profound um, impact that he had on her. She did not, and she didn't hesitate to share this. She told the men uh, because they were the, they, she told the men because they were the teachers, they were the uh, leaders who would um, appreciate a theological uh, discussion with Jesus. Other observations we can make here. Jesus forced her to face who she was. She had already come uh, to turn with her need and her sin. We see this in 4.15. And, if, and we see in 4.26, we see her true uh, condition. And in the end, she realized that, that he was the uh, Messiah and was determined to do what? She was determined to tell others. Now I want to move down just for a moment in chapters, John chapter 7 in uh, verse 26 it says but here he is speaking in public and they say nothing uh, to him uh, could our, they say nothing uh, to him could our leaders possibly believe he is the Messiah. So we look at if we look at John chapter seven, uh, there are several reactions there to Jesus. 
uh, John 7 and 12, they said, uh, it says that he's a, a good man. John 7 and 20, it says uh, that he was possessed. And John 7 and 26, that he is the uh, Messiah. And John 7 and 40, surely this is the prophet. So why did I, re why did I reference uh, chapter 7? What am I trying to, what point am I trying to make with this? We must make up in our minds who Jesus is. We must make up in our minds who Jesus is, because whatever we decide has eternal consequences. And then we continue to look at John 4, 20 to 30. The fact that she was a woman, now, let's look at this. The fact that she was a woman with a stained reputation, she had, uh, she had, uh, she could, she had a, a suggested that her theological and religious information coming from her, it would not be accepted by the elders of Sychar. Let me say that again. The fact that she was a woman with a stained reputation should and should have and her theological and religious information that she had uh, coming from her would not be accepted by the elders of Sychar. But notice something here. The sincerity of the woman, the sincerity of the woman caused the Samaritan, Samaritans to do what? To leave the city and seek Jesus for themselves. So here in John 4, 31, uh, John 4, 31 uh, to, to 33, it says, Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I have made, I have a kind of food you know nothing about. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked uh, each other. So now the Samaritans, they're on their way, uh, they're, the Samaritans are on their way, and Jesus was speaking privately uh, with this, uh, with this woman at the the well. Now, the disciples have made it back from the town, uh, getting food, and they were concerned if Jesus had eaten, and he should have been hungry at this time. But notice now, they could not, uh, the disciples, uh, they, they could not wrap their minds uh, around the fact that Jesus did not want anything to eat. The, his words were um, confusing uh, for them. And see, they were under the assumption that when Jesus spoke of meat, he had physically eaten. But look at the, first, the further observations that we um, can make here. The word meat is usually, uh, it refers to uh, physical food of any kind, and and where it is used met metaphorically, uh, the met metaphorical use is generally made clear. So we see this in 1 Corinthians 10 and 3, the New Living Translation says, all of them ate the same spiritual food. See, they wondered where did he get his physical food, and why wasn't it? Jesus ready to eat. Look at 4 and 34. Then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me from who sent me from finishing his work. Now Jesus realizes that the disciples now they are unaware of what he was talking about. He explained to them that when he does his father's will, uh, he is satisfied with uh, much like their, he would be satisfied just like much of their bodies would be satisfied when they have eaten. So what is the meat here? What is the meat? 
His meat was leading the woman to understand who he was through his revelation of her life. That was his meat. So in the King James says this meat, the New Living Translation says uh, this nourishment. What is this? This nourishment for us includes some things. This nourishment includes Bible study. This nourishment includes prayer. This nourishment includes attending church. This and this and this nourishment includes this meat includes doing God's will. So now it is imperative with Jesus to do the Father's work, and it should be what it should be the same with us today. When we do the will of God, it is the what is it? When we do the will of God, it's the source of strength. It is the source of of satisfaction. And for the child of God, my friend, for the Father's will is not a chore. The, the will of God is not a, a burden, it, it, it just as it was not um, for Jesus. So look at now 4 and 35. You know the saying, four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up and look around. The fields are already ripe for harvest. So now... The, the four months Jesus um, believe here he's speaking of here is the time between planting and harvest. So in March, the barley would turn white, showing they were ready uh, for harvest. So what is it that uh, what is it that we tend uh, to do? What, 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 is that we, what is it that we tend to do? One, we focus our attention on the, the physical harvest, the planting of the seed and the reaping of the grain. See, Jesus was thinking of the souls of the people, the, the lost souls who he had come to save. Look at Luke 19 and 10. In the New Living Translation says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. See, Jesus came to save all the lost, uh, regardless of their background, regardless of their previous way of life. I like that. Jesus came to save all the lost, regardless of their background or their previous way of life. So here's some, a couple of points here we can make. Uh, are we willing, a question for you, are we willing to push past our hunger hunger, to minister to others? Are we willing to push past our hunger to minister uh, to others? Are we willing to go to the least likely places when we uh, when we rather go home and crawl into the bed with a snack. Are we willing to go to the least likely places where we rather go home and crawl into our bed with a snack? See, in this verse, we see an example. What, what, what do we see? We see an example of Christ's humility. We see his helpfulness. We see his honest uh, and his honesty. And yes, we see his hunger. So we look at John 4, 36, 37. It says, New Living Translation, it says, The harvests are paid uh, good wages, and the fruit they harvest is people brought to eternal life. What joy awaits both the planter and the harvester alike? You know the saying, one plants and another harvests, and it's true. So here, now, in a natural harvest, the person who reaps may be one person, while the person who sows is another. And many people must work the land before the actual, before the actual harvest. But notice here in verse uh, 37, And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth in the uh, in the King James. The New Living Translation says, "You know the saying: one plants and and another and another harvest." 
So here, now the Old Testament prophets had put the work in doing their part to uh, prepare the soil. And, and, and the last in this tradition was John uh, the Baptist. But this work must, it will, uh, continue. So today, what are we to do? Uh, we, 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 we are to do what the Father has set us to, out to do. Seek and save, seek and save the lost. So here we see John uh, 4, 39 uh, through uh, 42. It says, Many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, He told me everything I ever did. When they came out to see him, they begged him to stay in their village. So he stayed there two days. Long enough for many more to hear his message and believe. Then they said to the woman, Now we believe, not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard him ourselves. No, we, now we know that he is indeed the Savior of the world. So the observations here. We, from this uh, passage, the Samaritans paid attention to the, uh, they paid attention to the, the woman's uh, experience. But notice some things here. Jesus talked to her. He knew all about her sins. He knew all about her lies. And he knew all about her secrets. But what did Jesus do? Jesus continued to to talk to her. He continued to talk to her, knowing her past. And this calls her to what? This calls her to realize uh, that he was the Messiah, the one she hoped to see. Now notice the Samaritans. They were interested because the woman, she did what? She testified. Uh, she was an earnest witness. She was a serious witness. A witness, and she did what a she did what a witness is supposed to do. She told the truth. So as a result, the men had to go to the source. They had to go. They went to the well and found Jesus. Now let's notice some things um, about Jesus. He was a witness who asked uh, probing questions. He was a witness who asked, uh, he was a witness uh, who fully and faithfully explained the scriptures. He was a witness who emphasized the good news to thirsty people. And notice um, that he desired more, they desired more, and wanted Jesus to stay longer. And they wanted more of what he had. They wanted more of what he had to offer. And he did. He stayed for two more days. So the Samaritans here. The Samaritans believed. Why? The Samaritans believed because of the woman's testimony. Uh, for us today, we believe because of the eyewitnesses that we have in the New Testament and throughout the entire Bible. But there's some observations I think uh, we can make here. Notice now, they noticed what? They noticed her transformation. They knew who she was and they saw who she became because of the man, Jesus. I like that. They knew who she was. They saw who she became because of the man, Jesus. And see, we came to see Jesus because of what? We came to see Jesus, I believe, because of the testimony of others. And this leads, and this, and this, and this did what? What happened because of this? This leads us into the relationship with Jesus. And then what will happen? We will have a, a testimony of our own. 
So I want to close with this. It's a wonderful section um, in the uh, in the in the printed text. Uh, the application is titled "The Application for Activation." It says, "Go tell the good news of Jesus Christ. You never know who might be transformed by your testimony. Don't be afraid to share what God has done for you." However, however. We are not only called to share the good news of Jesus Christ individually. Working as members of the church of church families, we also can share the love of Jesus with our community. As a church, explore the possibility of interfaith, uh, interracial dialogues. And the church is the hands, the church is the hands and the feet of Jesus. The church is the hands and the feet of Jesus in the world. And we should pursue every opportunity to love others as freely as Jesus has loved us. Thank you for this time. And I pray that what we have studied has uh, enlightened and encouraged um, each of us today and in the days to come. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we say thank you. Thank you for, uh, you, again, your darling son Jesus. Thank you for this time. Thank you for your word. And I pray today as we, as we go forward in the, weeks, the days and weeks to come that we will remember that we are the hands and the feet of Jesus and we are to pursue every opportunity that we have to show love for others as, as Jesus freely gave, freely loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for this time. God bless you and see you next time.